Hello, this is Branko Malic of Kali Tribune. In this podcast, we'll say a few words about dialectics. Uh, however, uh, we will not go in the detailed exposition of what the dialectics is in its various uh, forms from its origin in Greece and Greek philosophy onwards. But we will take a look at dialectics from one contemporary angle, from the angle namely of uh, dialectics being applied as an explanation of historical processes. Moreover, as the explanation that has a demonstrative value, that is, furthermore, explanation that is universally and necessarily valid. And this kind of dialectics is, lo and behold, applied by very many people who probably never heard about dialectics, except maybe in the slur Hegelian dialectics, which is uh, prominent in these online alternative circles for years now, and which is totally false, by the way, and has very little to do with what Hegelian dialectics is. However, uh, we'll have to say a few things about authentic Hegelian dialectics uh, to prove a point, or to better to say, to uh, proceed with a with discussion of the problem anyway. Namely, the problem is to define it. The attempt to, uh, by huge masses of people, both in the mainstream mentality and both of the what they call alternative mentality to absolutely explain the world, explain the contemporary politics and then to project this explanation in the past as something that was eternally valid. Suffice it to say that it ends up with a kind of image of the Garden of Eden, where Eve would never take a towel on the temple of knowledge of good and evil if there wasn't a manipulative CIA employed God who in turn sent the serpent, that is the devil, as his agent to manipulate the innocent Eve to take a fatal child and to pass it to Adam. This is of course a joke sat uh, and satire, uh, but satire is always based in reality, that is to say by uh, intensifying uh, the most uh, absurd conclusions of something to their, uh, to their consequent end. Satire is what, what is said in logic, reductio ad absurdum. So, CIA did it, did it, NATO did it, and so on and so forth. All down to Garden of Eden. Now, what is, has this got to do with Hegel? I'll try to explain in the shortest possible terms, briefest, excuse me. Dialectics originally uh, was not, is a method uh, of thinking that is the discipline of the mind or the discipline of the spirit employed to uh, approach the what is called first metaphysical principle and sir and I stress approach not grasp because dialectics is concerned with what platonics or neoplatonist philosophers called aphiresis. Aphiresis means uh, in uh, somewhat non-literal trans translation the peeling like the peeling of the crust, uh, layers of onion or peeling the crusts of something 
or peeling the uh, the, the the rust uh, to discover uh, still pure metal uh, below it. And this peeling is the peeling of sensual reality of what we perceive by senses to grasp the intelligible structure of some given being. And uh, this was uh, this is this is a method uh, that is. Uh, uh, strictly uh, related to uh, things that are uh, pointing out uh, towards the above, towards the world in Plato's case, and Plato is mostly the philosopher who is synonymous with dialectics in, uh, in the mind of historian of philosophy, uh, to the world of uh, eternal forms or ideas that in uh, turn uh, directs us to eternal reality that is the foundation of the transient temporal reality that further leads us uh, to the reality of the first principle something that Plato called the form or idea of good uh, that is uh, uh, not only uh, above senses, transcending the senses, but uh, also transcending the ideas, transcending even the intelligible, transcending the mind. It is unthinkable, but nothing else is thinkable without it. Uh, Plato, we won't go too far in, in Plato's, uh, uh, Plato's attempt to, to uh, explain, uh, not explain, but describe what the idea of good is through the Simils from his Republic. But just to not uh, note this, this is, uh, let's say, the fundamental, uh, fundamental form of dialectics historically. Hegelian dialectics is something else. And it is, I think, it can be in, uh, rela uh, the, the situation I just described at the beginning uh, with people trying to uh, impose uh, the eternal principles on uh, transient reality of history of uh, moreover not history in a broad sense but history in the sense of day-to-day -day politics uh, has this is a far cry from a Hegelian attempt because Hegel tried to show that dialectics is uh, both method and uh, the principle of being in general of uh, a world as it is. And this principle, however, is not something that is above a transient uh, and, and uh, mutable, as traditionally it was thought of, but it is revealed precisely through, through history. History is a revelation, dialectical revelation of its principle. And this principle is a dynamic one. In Hegel's logic, that is the fundamental uh, propedeutical segment of his system of absolute knowledge, <coughs> we have the first dialectical relation uh, that gives birth to all others. And this is the relation of the being and nothingness. Now this term being uh, transcends every genera and every species, which means that while being, that being is uh, present, omnipresent in everything, from the lowest, uh, lowest thing to the highest and more, most uh, developed and most differentiated thing, they are all beings. They all, as the Platonics would say, participate in being. And traditionally this made uh, being the signifier, the word for ultimate reality, the reality that transcends the reality as we know it, and that we should not uh, apply the confines of this reality, transient reality we know to the being itself. And it is most abundant most concrete, most free, and most, and by far, the eternal 
it eternal uh, all pervading reality of all we are not always aware but which is uh, nevertheless always present because it makes possible our very existence as well as our thinking about our existence well in hegel being is the most also most encompassing term but for him it is a concept it is not something that is above the concept it is concept because there is nothing outside the concepts our concepts are, are thoughts uh, defining uh, the the may uh, the essence of a thing to have concept is to have some grasp of the essence of something as opposed of only having an impression or the aggregate of impressions for hegel nothing transcends the concepts nothing is transconceptual so being as a concept is completely empty of content because it is undifferentiated we say uh, it is it is as a, if we will go to a marketplace this is hegel's uh, hegel's uh, metaphor and we say uh, to, to some woman selling apples please give me fruit and decline to specify which fruit this is very similar oh, in hegel's eyes the term being is similar to this so this very fact it quotes the being with nothing this is in philosophical theology especially theological terms something akin to nuclear disaster but we don't <laughs> we won't go too deep into this and being and nothingness when we take them together because they obviously go together in this hegelian dialectical sense to be conceived must be seen as coming to pass from being to nothing and from nothing to be and this is something that hegel calls a werden that is coming to pass and this is the principle the only principle uh, we can think the only principle that can be everything has to be in flux in werden in process and this process is meaningful because it is a revelation of spirit it is a revelation of completely uh, meaningful end of history which becomes transparent after a long process of uh, dialectical stages through uh, development of societies art sciences through great historical upheavals they are all here to in, a, in the end be reconciled something that hegel calls personung in dialectical identity and we have the world of in the, we end up with a kind of a kind of uh, fulfilled world where god is as hegel says uh, finally uh, finally revealed uh, revealed in the world and everything uh, goes uh, business as usual but there is no need to discover anything else and so on and so forth this may seem stupid to you and in some sense it is stupid but hegel was a really a great philosopher and uh, throughout his monumental failure uh, <laughs> <laughs> through monumental failure of this project of his uh, he, uh, even his mistakes are very valuable to study and some things he did get right and not 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 single thing of what i said now is right in my opinion but some other things especially in terms of philosophy of art of aesthetics he was very uh, very insightful there now this is uh, in broad terms hegelian dialectics this is the opposite of what the dialectics was meant to be and understood to be even by its critics in the ancient world and the middle ages and now we have this far cry of dialectics in a public sphere especially in the in internet sphere uh, something that i noticed a long time ago and i did already had already written about this uh, this is something that we can sum up in this uh, popular uh, o o quotation of George Orwell. He who controls the past 
controls the present, he co controls the present, who controls the future. Uh, to tell you the truth, I'm not quoting literary, I don't have 1984 at hand, but I think this is accurately a accurate uh, disposition of past, present and future in uh, Orwell's uh, quote. And this quote uh, sums up the double speak, and double speak is a dialectics of his imagined uh, absolute totalitarian party state. Now I would submit that people who post this slur on the social networks and like to, to point it out as something that uh, proverbial powers that be are trying to do to them are doing precisely this thing. Activists, uh, all kinds of truth, movements, uh, I don't know, anyway, uh, the, 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 the masses of people who are trying to figure out the world and fight the injustice in the sense that they think, obviously, that they found the absolute evil and the absolute enemy and that they are fighting him, it, that is, uh, by mediating the information. And this absolute enemy is nowadays sometimes called globalism and sometimes it is even called NATO and in most instances it sums up to be uh, United States of America. Now, this is for every thinking human, reflecting human, which means not an activist. This is complete nonsense. But there is some aspect of this that is very sinister. Namely, absolute evil uh, that is uh, seen in the history, in dialectical process of history as necessary, as, as, as this is the evil, as that you have, uh, that everything uh, is happening by its action, uh, has to be infinite. It was, in a way, always there. And that's why my satire on uh, Garden of Eden is not to be taken without a note of uh, loathing in, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the laughter, if it provokes the laughter. And it's normal for satire, because satire is a very serious thing, in fact. It is that serious. This is... This is uh, the trajectory of this kind of thinking, is, or if thinking this could be named. I'll give you an example, an example that I am uh, always uh, eager to point out on Kali Tribune uh, for personal reasons. Uh, the wars, in, for instance, in Ukraine or Syria, especially in Syria and Middle East, are taken by activists and their followers, activists for Syria, to be the paradigm uh, for all other conflicts. So now, for instance, the past conflict as, for instance, war in what was some, uh, before Yugoslavia, for that uh, started in 1991, uh, had the same causes and the same result as these wars in Middle East. That is, it was, of course, started and conducted by absolute evil, that is, in its final and most concrete form, geographical form, United States of America. Uh, the matter of fact is that this is completely untrue. This has uh, not a single a uh, shred of relation to what came to pass at that time and it is pretty easy to uh, figure this out because this is one of the better documented, it, this is relatively recent event but although it is recent it is from completely other age, it is from the end of the Cold War and this was very different America, very different Europe and very different world. This is pre-9-11 world, and this is something completely different from what we have now. 
and uh, being so very well documented and uh, you have relatively young people like me that were there witnesses to this <laughs> and I'm not so I'm not one of the best witnesses because I was not besieged in Sarajevo but I could name a few names of my very close friends who were uh, who throughout the war uh, under these sieges very young from 15 to their 17 year, 18 year, because uh, the siege, concretely siege of Sarajevo lasted for some three years. Uh, this is very easy to demonstrate to be false. But what uh, I find fascinating and really frightening is that people promulgating such views, and I'm just talking about one example, there are other examples of this process of changing the past. Uh, those people uh, very easily find information that collabor corroborate uh, their, their, um, their uh, view, their worldview. And sometimes it almost seems to me that information have intelligence of their own and seem to cluster around those people. And those information uh, create a kind of tunnel which encloses them. And wherever they look after this, they see only reflection of their own thoughts. And I am in no way convinced uh, that pointing out the facts can shatter this tunnel because it is not about the facts, it's, it is about the images, it is about the imaginary explanations. Uh, now information, in my estimation, is not knowledge at all. Information is a quantified attempt to quantify knowledge. To make knowledge, uh, to to individuate knowledge into quantifiable units. This is uh, this is this is information. It is a materialization of what cannot be materialized. And while we have this uh, extreme empiricism, that is the notion that oh, you can only know things that are in flux, that are in sense experience, which is also completely false. We have, on the other hand, this even crazier view that information is knowledge and that information can, in a way, provide you with a complete, a non-contradictory uh, explanation of the world. Well, as opposed to that, information provi provides you with an all-encompassing material system, even we can even imagine this as something uh, that can be touched. A re veritable reality tunnel. An explanation of everything in this sense means overpowering of everything. And this is what it's all about. It's about the power. The desire to explain away the world history in dialectical terms, in the terms of absolute knowledge, is the desire to overpower the world. And this desire is shared by people who consider themselves to be fighting the powers that be. Well, like hell they are. They are powers that be. They are powers that be in a most eminent sense. There is, uh, there always was this idea of uh, shadowy elites, and shadowy elites do exist. Some are not so shadowy as not being much observed. And uh, uh, But rarely does anyone think about himself as a part of this <laughs> elite that is shaping and, 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 and in a way, uh, albeit low in the hierarchy of, of power, shaping the world in the image of total materialization of a world becoming uh, something akin to what Orwell wanted to present with this idea of double speak and this control of the past. Because this is what is coming to pass and it is promulgated by what is called in English grassroots people. Most of all, no Soros. No Clintons, no Trumps, Putins. The people, 
the people who uh, supposedly cannot go wrong. <laughs> well, I hell, they cannot. <laughs> this is, I think, what we are getting. And what is interesting is, is this way of thinking, this way of projecting, in fact, is starting to be present across the board, uh, both in uh, what is in the center, that is mainstream media, academia, and mainstream politics, and what is fringe, alternative media, alternative research, alternative uh, politics. They are kind of, uh, the differences uh, in approach to the world are starting to, to, to uh, dissolve. And I find this worrisome, to, <laughs> to say the least. So when you see, uh, you see this activism, this extreme zealotry of idealism in making world better, in trying to stop all the wars, trying to bring the truth out against the powers that be, that are in some sense always America. <laughs> America is not the only power to be, it's just the most powerful country, which to a large extent completely lost its bearings, which was not always the case, I would say. Uh, but there are other contenders that could be very much could be worse. This is a historical temporal process and every power has its time. There is no absolute power in the realm of humans. Only if we imagine it as such as I already explained in this uh, Adam and Eve parody that some people are doing with America. Uh, this zealotism an idealism which is sometimes really driven by by quest for justice or a real quest of justice ends up in the complete egoism because what you project in this uh, hegelian dialectics uh, the masses are producing right now is projecting your own self because the principle of such dialectics can be only one and this principle is i the conscious human subject or the conscious subject that encompasses all humans uh, because this is the only thing that can hold together this transient flux the old dialectician of, of old would never call history dialectical because he, they knew that it really doesn't have this principle inherent principle uh, that that makes it uh, one uh, absolutely describable system. So either you have a God who is uh, the Lord of history, or either you have a man. There is no third. There is a third, I think, but I won't talk about him now. And these people choose man. And this is something that was apparent also in uh, German idealism, where Hegel was prominent, uh, prominent figure, and they also had this, as I said in my last podcast, they, their philosophy of identity in Schelling and so on. They had this idea of reconciling I and the world, because I, ego, is the only principle uh, that can hold this together. Its imagination, in fact, is holding this together. Hegel was certain that it is a thinking, the absolute thinking of thinking, where uh, after historical process, uh, the human, uh, the essence of human being discloses itself to be the same, identical with the essence of God, which is in theological terms really akin to uh, nuclear disaster, but we won't go deeper into this. Uh, now we see something similar and something happening well, en masse. And this is something I'm writing about in my series on uh, synchronicity. And as I said, I think this is the third time I repeated the, the second part of this analysis is in the works and it will be uh, on Kali Tribune at the latest on, I think on Wednesday, I really want to get it right, and there will be some in-depth in talk about this problem, among other things, that is this problem of reality tunnel, 
but uh, under the aspect of chaos magic and such ideas. Anyway, this was Branko Malic of Kali Tribune. Hope this was uh, enjoyable, informational and <clears throat> I really hope uh, that uh, you will continue to follow and uh, support Kali Tribune in the future. This is Branko Malic signing out.